a little over three months ago, I dropped everything I was doing and hard swapped over to Hyperland, a W Roots Wayland compositor, basically just leaving Exorg behind. And in the months since, I've even gained the title of YouTube's biggest Wayland propagandist. But was it worth it? Should you make use of Hyperland? Now keep in mind, I'm running the 0.27.2 build, so everything I say is with a giant asterisk of the current version. I'm recording this in July of 2023. If you watch this six months or a year later, everything I say might be completely out of date. Something that shouldn't change is the basics. So let's do a bit of a refresher. Hyperland makes use of what is known as a dynamic tiling window manager model. This means when you spawn a window, it is going to be tiling, and by dynamic it means it will automatically place the windows in a location as defined by Hyperland itself, completely removing the need to manually specify a direction. The dynamic model is my preferred model. But that's not special. Hyperland's major selling point is it doesn't sacrifice on looks, having a really smooth animation system. You probably noticed that before as we're spawning the windows. Also, as we go and move them around or go between desktops. Now, even though the animations are here, you don't have to use them. If you don't like any of them or you don't like all of them, they can individually be disabled. Also, we have fancy compositor features like window blur, transparency, we have rounded corners, gradient borders, you can have a double border if you want, and all of these nice little tweaks that make Hyperland Rices actually look pretty cool. And all of this is done in a config file that automatically reloads itself upon changes. But for me, most of that stuff is like sprinkles on a cake. It's nice to have, but the cake is the important part. And for me, that was, and still is, the global hotkey support. At least while we wait for the more generic solution to be adopted from the XDG portals. Most WL Roots compositors simply don't provide the ability for applications to listen in on key presses unless that application is currently focused. So right now, this window is in focus. If I just press random things, they are being sent to the window. But if I have another window and I start pressing keys over here, they are not being sent to this original window. This makes perfect sense and works just fine for writing text. But for things like my OBS window here, I have all of these different layouts that I want to be able to swap between whilst I am currently talking to you guys. And I'm not going to have my mouse over that window. I'm going to have it on one of the things that I'm trying to show you. So what I can do with Hyperland is I can actually send a key press into that application while the application is not focused, allowing me to do things like this. Now, obviously doing it like this is really annoying, but you can see that I can swap back to my full face, I can swap to my desktop, and anything else I want to be able to swap to. Over on the Xorg side, this isn't anything special. This is just how Xorg works. Any application window you have open can just listen in on the keyboard whenever it wants. On the Wayland side, that's generally not a thing you can do for security. In this case though, I can pick and choose exactly what keys I want to send in and what applications I want you send it to. It's not been without its flaws. I reported ages back that my numpad keys were not working. Previously, that is what I would use to control OBS. Now I'm using my F keys. I'm using my F keys because they were just not being detected. I didn't really know why. Like the key was showing up in WEV. It was giving me the proper name. So it made no sense to me. That problem has since been addressed and should work just fine now. The problem is I don't have a numpad anymore, so it doesn't really matter to me. The other issue is a bit more annoying. So inside of PC Man FM, if I press F4, that should open a terminal in my currently open window. That doesn't do it because F4 is one of the keys I'm sending into OBS. And this is consistent across every application. If you are sending this key into something else, it is going to be completely eaten by that program. However, on the topic of things that do work properly, HyperCTL. This is a tool for sort of peering into what the window manager is doing. So in this case, I want to check out something like my monitors. We can do HyperCTL monitors. It will list out my three monitors, DP1, DP2, and HDMI A1, and everything I need to know about them. Or I can check out something like my workspaces. Here we go. Or... Here's the fun thing, I can list out this data in another form, making it considerably easy to parse. Pass in dash J, and now we have a JSON version of that data. 
But this isn't the only thing that HyperCTL can do. Also, it can be used to run commands that you would otherwise run inside your config. So if you want to update your wallpaper, you want to go and kill a window, you want to go and change up some bindings or mess around with anything else, this is your go-to command for scripting Hyperland. What you don't go to Hyperland for is drawing tablet support, because out of the box, it does not have it. And this is a really, really good thing. Rather than trying to make some random driver that barely works, instead the wiki directs you to open tablet driver. This is a system that works across Windows, Linux, and macOS on X11 and Wayland. It is a great driver, and it provides this really nice GUI for configuring where your drawing tablet should actually be mapped to. You can go and configure your pen settings and everything else you need to configure. It is a great tool, and everybody should be using it. Anyone who uses a drawing tablet on Linux should know there's a Wacom driver in the kernel. The problem is I don't know of a way to configure it to work on Wayland. Like, it will function. It will do the thing. But I don't know how you're going to go about configuring it, and there's no tool to configure it in Hyperland. Just disable the module and use this instead. Now, like Sway and most other tiling experiences, Hyperland does not ship with a status bar. The status bar you see at the top here, this is Waybar. Specifically, a fork of Waybar called Waybar-Hyperland. This swaps out a lot of the Sway specific features for Hyperland versions instead, allowing it to show the desktops I'm currently using on Hyperland. This would not work with the main version of Waybar. There is one slight problem I've had. So I've had to set Waybar to be at the top of my compositor. This means that any windows that I put over it are always going to appear behind it. This also includes windows like D menu. So if I try to get it to spawn at the top here, it's always going to be behind it. It's not a big deal. I'm fine with it being on the bottom. And this could probably be dealt with by using a Wayland native launcher. But I like my D menu. On the topic of minor inconveniences, I am no longer using Flameshot as my screenshot tool. I still have it here for the X11 side, but it is just really, really inconsistent on Wayland. I know it's supposed to have WR Root Wayland support, and you can get it to work most of the time kind of fine. But on way too many occasions, it complains that it can't find the Wayland QT library, and just refuses to open. I don't want to deal with that, so instead of that, I'm using a tool called Grim. Grim is basically as light as you can get with a screenshot tool. It is just a very simple CLI tool, and the way I mostly use it is I have a hotkey here, I just select a thing, and done. It just saves it in the screenshot folder, no giving me options for like, you know, drawing on the screenshot, selecting a place, nope. Screenshot, it's in the folder, and it's done. To be honest, it's probably an upgrade. Most of the time, I don't use the annotation feature to flame shot anyway, and it's always going to be saved in my screenshots folder. So I might as well just skip the rest of the steps and have something this simple. There is one drawback which is kind of annoying. It doesn't pause the screen. So if I want to screenshot something on a video, I want to screenshot something in a game, I have to make sure I actually get the timing right. I can't just press it and then line it up exactly like I need it to be. Now, one of my biggest pastimes is gaming. And to my surprise, maybe it's just that I'm getting old, maybe I'm just terrible at video games, but gaming on Wayland doesn't feel any worse than gaming on X11. Granted, I do have a 165Hz display. If I was using something maybe at 60Hz, maybe the input delay would be slightly noticeable? But at least for me, I couldn't even tell you the difference. If you gave me a blind test, I probably couldn't tell you what I'm actually using. With the exception of the couple of games that just completely break. This is not a problem specific to Hyperland. This seems to be a more general Wayland issue that happens on Sway and happened on KDE and all of these other things. So I've talked about this before, but in FF14, randomly when clicking my mouse, the camera would just snap as if I've thrown my mouse across the desk. The way I address this is running the game inside of Gamescope. And Gamescope is a Wayland compositor. It's a Wayland compositor by Valve. I don't know what special thing Valve has done and why it doesn't work on the general WROOTS compositors, but I really want to know. 
But I'm pretty sure it's not just a problem with FF14. I've seen a similar problem reported for Guild Wars 2 as well, so it's likely random other games have the exact same issue. If a game does have that issue, just run it in game scope and it should be fine. Besides that, you just have the general weirdness of gaming in a tailor. Some games are really not happy about having their resolution changed or running at a resolution that is completely random. If you have a game in a tile, some games just don't know what to do with that. If you just run it as a floating window or you make sure it is always running as full screen, for the most part, those problems don't tend to happen. Sometimes problems can happen on launch, but this is going to be a very game by game specific issue. I have not run into anything that I couldn't fix by just going full screen and then just updating the resolution. But it wouldn't be fair to blame Hypeland for this. The exact same thing happened on Sway. The exact same thing happens on Awesome, on BSPWM, on i3. If it is tiling, gaming is always a little bit weird. Whilst I've had many issues come and go, there is still one consistent thorn in my side. XDG desktop portals and Pipewire video capture. This is how I'm capturing my desktop. Wayland generally, and Hyperland as well, does not have a way to capture your desktop. This is done through Pipewire video capture and sent into applications like OBS through XDG desktop portals. And for the most part, it works fine. And unlike Sway, Hyperland's portal also lets you do window capture. This is present on things like GNOME, but is not present on Sway. The generic WL Roots portal does not currently have window capture enabled. For good reason, it's a little bit buggy. I have a consistent method for completely locking up my system. If I have a pipe wire window capture inside of OBS and then I resize the window, not resizing the capture in OBS, the actual window itself, my system starts to chug. One of my CPU cores is completely maxed out by the portal, another one is maxed out by pipe wire, and another one is like half maxed out by Hyperland. And the longer I leave this run, the slower my system starts to get. And eventually, the system completely locks up. When I say completely locks up, I mean I can't even swap TTYs. The only thing I can do is hard reset the computer. And a few days ago on the 0.27.0 build, literally just opening up OBS with portals would crash the compositor. And there's the consistent issue of sometimes opening up OBS and then selecting a thing with the portal and nothing is shown. For the record, I'm pretty sure all of these are reported issues and are slowly being worked on. It's just a matter of finding where the issue is. And for most of the issues, they don't stick around for that long. The Hyperland developer is incredibly active. I had an issue where Qt applications had random see-through elements. He added a fix the same day. I had an issue where GTK2 apps, which pretty much is just GIMP and PCMan FM GTK2, were crashing Hyperland. That had a fix the same day. And with this new issue, I have no doubt that it is going to be fixed soon as well. But until then, I kind of want to swap back to awesome. With that 0.27.0 issue, I actually did swap back, so you might notice some videos coming up that are using a slightly different desktop. This leads me to my general conclusion. Hyperland is an absolutely incredible project that is night and day better than when I first looked at it. When I first looked at it like six months or a year ago, like before I did my first video, it was unusable. My screen was flickering. I opened a window. My screen flickered more. I was like, I'm not going to do a video on this. People are telling me this is great. I cannot do a video in this current state. I gave it a couple of months and that's where my first video was. It was a little unstable then, but it was still really good. And now it is so much better than it was just those few months ago. But... It's still very much beta software, and with beta software, you're occasionally gonna find some rough edges. And when you're doing video work on Wayland, you're sort of in the beta of the beta, and run into every possible issue that can ever happen. If you're not doing that, all you're doing is browsing the internet, using your terminal, playing video games, doing normal computer things, minus the video creation work. Hyperland in its current state is absolutely incredible and is only getting better every single day. 
I would say right now, it is probably the most complete WL Root experience. And if I was going to direct someone to a WL Roots compositor, Hypeland is what I would send you to. But you do have to keep in mind, you may run into the odd crash here and there. So please be willing to submit bug reports. The developer Vaxfree is going to see this video. I know he's going to see this video. So if there's anything you want to say about Hypeland, say your praises, maybe have some complaints with it, be sure to let me know in the comment section down below. And if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one over these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, silly bearer pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and... Hyper away! I, I need to think about these outros more.